before we look at that, let's talk about those earthquake waves. So the Richter scale, does that sound familiar? This is on the left-hand side page, and you can put it all the way at the top. I don't know why I skipped three lines. It must have been a weird day. So this is on the left-hand page, the very next two clean pages. Turn a page. Yep, we want the two clean pages after the vocabulary on our layers of the earth and after the tectonic plates. Yep. So this is the Richter scale. Oh, that was stupid, but okay, never mind. We can still put it down. So I don't think it's like before your time. It wasn't too long ago that even in Oklahoma, we were starting to up earthquake activity and there were earthquakes here and threes and fours. I don't think we had anything above like a four point something or other on the Richter scale. But places near the Ring of Fire that we talked about on Friday, they're gonna have much higher um, levels of force, levels of um, on the Richter scale for their earthquakes. And so seven and nine even has been reported in those kind of areas because we have some really violent plate activity that's happening. So. The Richter scale is used to compare the size and the strength of earthquakes. The Richter scale is used to compare the size and the strength of earthquakes. And it's a one to 10 scale But it's somewhat more of an exponential scale than just a gradual increase. All right, can I have a volunteer step forward to demonstrate earthquake strength? Whoever gets here first, run! <laughs> All right, so grab that. Just don't, yeah, turn around and show them. Show them. One piece of spaghetti. Alina has one piece of spaghetti. Chances are sometime in your life you've had one piece of spaghetti in your hands just as well, right? Sound familiar? Okay. No, never? Oh, my goodness. You've never had one piece of spaghetti? Today's the day. There it is, one piece of spaghetti. All right, so this one piece of spaghetti, hold it kind of in the middle. Yes, yes, just give yourself a little bit of space. In just a moment, not now, not now, because we have to have a little bit of build up here. In just a moment, Alina is going to act as an earthquake. And this is going to act as a tectonic plate. And she's going to snap that piece of spaghetti to indicate the amount of force required in order to break that from an earthquake. Okay? All right, whenever you're ready. Does it take a lot of force? No. So let's say that that's an earthquake that's a level one earthquake. A lot of times, a one on a Richter scale, we don't even feel that because it's such a small amount of force. But the technology that we've developed can pick that up. And chances are you've seen a seismogram before. It's got those little wiggly lines on it. And then as it gets stronger, the wiggly lines get bigger. The thing is, is that a two on the Richter scale is not two pieces of spaghetti. Thank you. A, no, 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 no. <laughs> A two on a Richter scale, and then see where my tape's at, probably hold it right about there. A two on the Richter scale is 30 times more force than a one. So now, how many pieces of spaghetti does she have? 30, 30, so she's got 30 pieces of spaghetti, and hold it right there, and then, whenever you're ready. So, was that as easy as one? Did it require more force? Required more force. Thank you. Now you can go ahead and have a seat because I can't do the next one in here because the next one in here isn't just 30 and 30. The next one, if I remember correctly, is like 270 pieces of spaghetti. So this is 60. We would need 270 pieces of spaghetti and have to break that. And I ain't buying that much spaghetti. But you can do that on your own when you have time. So... 
Well, that's okay. That's all right. This, this isn't math class. So, oops, let's do this first. So, level one, magnitude two, two is about 30 times greater in force. Magnitude three is about 30 times greater than a number two, but then 900 times greater than a one because it goes up 30 times each level. That means when we get to a magnitude number four, that's about 30 times greater than a number three, which is 27,000 times greater than a number one, which would be 27,000 pieces of spaghetti. I've never held that much spaghetti. I hope to someday. And then of course, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Imagine the amount of force as it's building exponentially at each of those magnitudes. Sediment are small, solid pieces of material that come from rocks or organisms. So they could be plant or animal matter. Sediment, small, solid pieces of material that come from rocks or organisms. Then deposition. Deposition is the process by which sediment settles out of the water or wind that is carrying it. Deposition is the process by which sediment settles out of the water or wind that is carrying it. All right, next, go ahead and cut out the pictures and cut them out like this. Is that upside down? So these two are separate, and then these two kind of go together. Whenever you get finished cutting them out, put your little pieces of trash in the trash can, put your scissors back in the bucket.
All right. Next, we're going to need this long piece of paper, and we want it horizontal. In just a moment, you're going to fold it. But when we fold it, we're folding it in a specific way. So hang on just a second before you fold yours. When we fold our piece of paper, we're going to fold it from the left to the right, but not completely over. We want to make sure that we have an equal amount here as what's on the fold. So when you fold it over from the left to the right, it's not going to go completely over. When you fold it over from the left to the right, you want to fold it so that this side is about as big as the folded side. Does that make sense? All right, go ahead and fold it from the left to the right so that the tab part, what's left, is about as big as what's folded over. So don't fold it completely across. Fold it from the left to the right so that the tab that's left is about as big as the door that's folded over. Fold it over. All right, then you're going to take your pencil and just trace along the edge of that paper where it's folded at. And then we need two terms across the top, weathering on the left-hand side, erosion on the right-hand side. And notice how I've got it all the way up at the top there. So if we're going to talk about weathering and erosion, we need to go back to our vocab sheet and pick up those two terms. Do I have a volunteer to read? OK, go for it. Go and do weathering. All right, so weathering is simply the breakdown of rock. That's going to be important to um, pay attention to here later on. Erosion, go ahead. So we had weathering that occurred first, and now that material is being transported somewhere else. So in order to have erosion, the rock material is not there anymore. It is no longer there. It was transported somewhere else, but we had to have weathering that occurred first. So we've got weathering and erosion on our little foldable here. So uh, two different color highlighters. So you want a different color for weathering, different color for erosion. I bet there's somebody around you that would be willing to share because we're all friends here. So we've highlighted geosphere. We've highlighted tectonic plate. Oh, we didn't highlight tectonic plate, did we? We'll come back to that. We highlighted geosphere, atmosphere, ozone. So now we need two different colors, one for weathering, one for erosion. Doesn't matter what color you choose. So I highlighted the vocab term weathering on mine. I highlighted it blue. So on the outside of my little foldable, I'm highlighting weathering blue. So I highlighted whatever the same, go back to your vocab term, whatever you highlighted weathering on the vocab, that's what we highlight weathering on here. Yes, give yourself a little sketch. And I labeled my rock because I figured that I wouldn't be able to come back and understand why I had that lump there and what the little pieces of popcorn were doing. So I labeled that as well, pieces of rock. But that gives me a nice visual. Weathering is when you have a parent rock, a big piece of rock, and it's broken down into small pieces of rock. But they're still there in the picture, just little pieces of rock. They're still there.
right? So, and after I have my little diagram on the front of that, I'm going to open this up. And I don't have my little line here. I need a little line. Open this up. Then I'm going to take my two little pieces. And when I tape these guys in, I'm taping them so that I can get underneath because I need a little bit of extra room and I'm not taping them all the way to the top because we're gonna put a label on the top here. So I'm taping them in so that I can write on the top and so that I can get underneath so that I can write some additional information. So I need room at the top and I need to be able to get underneath. He has been weathered. While we are here and have tape, we can go ahead and just put our erosion. Yes, we can. And we can put it right underneath erosion, but once again, we need to get underneath it. So one little piece of tape. All right, so for weathering, we have two different types of weathering. And it doesn't matter which side you put Old George on, but just make sure this information goes with them. So this is chemical weathering. And I highlighted that the same color that I highlighted weathering on my vocab page because it is a type of weathering. It's just a chemical change. So for chemical weathering, this is the process that breaks down rock by changing the original material into something different. It's still there. It's still weathering. It's going to be in a puddle at George's feet, but it's not going to be that same limestone or um, marble statue that he started out to be. So in this situation, we have acid rain that's working on that statue breaking down that original rock and changing that original material into something different. Chemical weathering, this is an example, um, acid rain is an example of chemical weathering. The process that breaks down rock by changing the original material into something different. Next type of weathering is mechanical weathering. So our example here was the little jackhammer breaking down that rock physically into smaller pieces. Mechanical weathering, physical weathering, we're not changing it into something else, we're just breaking it down into smaller pieces of that original rock. OK, 
mechanical weathering. Jackhammer breaking down rock is an example of mechanical weathering. This is the process that physically breaks rock into smaller pieces. Finally, erosion. Remember, that's the process. It's the process where the loosened sediment is carried away. So we have two pictures on here. Water can carry it away. Wind can carry it away. So one of them is showing erosion from water. One of them showing erosion by wind. So the destructive process in which water or wind loosens and carries away fragments of rock. destructive process in which water or wind loosens and carries away fragments of rock. Right. We can take this on the right-hand side page in the middle. I didn't pay enough attention as to where I was putting stuff, but that's okay. We can just tape it on the right-hand. Richter scale is on the left-hand side, sediment deposition. You can just tape this in on the right-hand side. But remember, you don't want to tape it down so that you can't get into it, so don't tape the top. You're probably going to want to tape the flap side and then the fold side so that you can still get in there. If you tape the top, then you're not going to be able to open that up. So if you tape on the fold and tape on the flap, and you can just put it smack dab in the middle of that page because I didn't pay 